Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. <clears throat> well, it's still dark outside. It's going to be another hot day. It's been hot this week. Not extremely hot, though. Low 90s, low to mid 90s, not the super hot hot. We have a high pressure area, which is keeping rain away. Still have a lot of humidity, but relatively high pressure because uh, weeks before it was very rainy. But anyway, not a weather report. It's a taste challenge, and we have... I think, I'll go rinse the top of this off. I think this bottle is from 1994. It's an unusually, an unusual shape bottle like this cone top. It's a liter. I got it for $6.99 at International Market. So I think it's a 26-year-old bottle with the old B. I think it looks like a house fly, though. Um, Club Whiskey. American blended whiskey. This was back when Bellows was on, owned by the Beam Company. But Beam sold it to Luxco five years ago. <clears throat> Bellows was an independent company for a long time. Used to have advertisements in the newspapers. They had a huge portfolio of every kind of liquor, you know, and liqueurs. Any kind of liquor they had, <clears throat> most of it, well, all of it was distilled by someone else, contract distilled. Um, but anyway, uh, I think they were purchased by Seagram's at some point, maybe in the 1930s or something like that, or when prohibition came, they couldn't make it. The nefarious age of prohibition. And then um, I know that starting in the mid 1980s, Seagram started to sell off their brands. For the last 15 years of their existence, they kept shedding brands. They went from the biggest <laughs> liquor company in the world, distilled spirits company in the world, to out of business by the year 2000. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that Beam bought Bellows from Seagram's and then um, then Beam didn't want it so five years ago they sold it to Luxco so it's been passed around let's pour a little bit out There is a restaurant called Chinese King, and I noticed they have this club whiskey in their bar room. Well, bar room, it's really behind the counter when if you go to, you know, ask for a seat or to pay your bills. So uh, <laughs> they do have a little bar. All right. And they have Bellows Club Whiskey on the shelf. J.W. Dant, never. I, OK, I think Dorgnax has this, but I'm not sure. OK. Okay, so, um, but I bought this in Bay St. Louis. So the other one I bought at International Market in Metairie, Louisiana. This I bought in Bay St. Louis, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi. <laughs> Bay St. Mississippi, six forty nine for the seven fifty. So Bellows is a better price per ounce, but is it a better product? Uh. Um, one thing, uh, one more thing. You ever notice these blended whiskeys generally have the same drab label design? It's like this yellow, washed out yellow color. I have them lined up on the counter and they're all, it's like depressing to look at it. They're all, all, like, all the same. It's like, wow, what, what is this like a thing? You know, the rye whiskeys always have green. Well, not always, but usually have that green, a green thing. So you see green, that's rye. You see drab. I don't know, is that blended? It's not universal, but it just caught my eye. I noticed it. Appearance. Well, they're both caramel color because you know what? They're adding caramel coloring. You say, well, they age four years. 
at least four years. I know that Bellows is four years. It says it on the bottle. The straight whiskeys in this product are aged four years. And it's 20% straight. You would assume Jim Beam bourbon, uh, which is nothing remarkable, but a four-year-old bourbon. Charcoal perfected, we don't know how old it is, but we know it's at least four years age because it doesn't have an age statement. And that's the law in the United States. If the whiskey has no age statement, fine, don't put one. You don't have to, but it has to be at least four years old. Could be as, the, 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 the length is endless. You could, you could age it for a hundred years if you wanted, but if you have no age statement, it has to be, the youngest whiskey in there has to be at least four years. And these are blended, so it's probably all kind of different bourbons blended in, bourbons that, oh, don't pan out. Like, you know, they got too much heat in the warehouse, not enough heat, too got too cold, the pressure was wrong, it was happening with the wood. So they just blend them in, and then they use grain spirits as the filler, the base, the unaged grain neutral spirits, invariably made out of corn. Doesn't have to be corn, could be wheat, could be barley, doesn't really matter because you're going to get the same result, a neutral grain spirit. It's going to be clear, have no odor, no flavor. And if you only use that, it would, it would be, well, you could buy that stuff. You could buy diesel or Everclear if you ever want to try it, diesel or Everclear. But see, those are uncut, 190 proof. They're not made for drinking. It'll tell you that on the website like this is poison don't drink it it's made for make it's made to make things you see what i'm saying so you if you had some sort of instruments you could dilute it down to 80 proof which is what they do i was at the distillery and she let us taste the uncut 190 proof grain spirits couldn't it was just didn't have much taste but it was so strong in the alcohol sensation it's crazy. And she said, all they do is add faucet water. That's it. Just water out the faucet. And, and, and bring it down to, um, that might be treated at their distillery to, for impurities, whatever. Okay, fine. Bring it down to 80 proof. Then they blend in the straight bourbon. Uh doesn't matter what the ratio is as long as it's at least 20 percent okay so use it a little illegal as long as you're using at least 20 percent of the volume straight whiskey it's fine now it could be 25 percent could be 27 and a half like with one of mine that i have here doesn't matter does not matter now if you go below 20 percent then you have a problem but it isn't really a problem because then all you have to do is relabel it spirit whiskey below, below 20% straight bourbon. I saw some of that at Walmart uh, just two days ago, Rebecca Creek spirit whiskey. And they wanted like $26 cause it had a fancy bottle. And it was pretty, I said, uh, I don't believe I'm going to go there. But that's the story on it. <laughs> What's up? Travis says. Travis Childers. Just chilling. Drinking a bud. Okay, here we go. Now, I predict. Could be wrong. I don't think I will be. Hold on a second. <laughs> I think that the club whiskey is not going to taste like the, the um, charcoal perfected because the club whiskey is going to have this sharp kind of off-putting pepper note. I don't know what Jim Beam was thinking when he made this. It, I just don't like it at all. I think it's the worst blended whiskey I've got. And I've got a lot. Now, the charcoal perfected, they have these natural flavors added. You say, what are the flavors? I don't know, but it, 
it's probably some sort of a blending sherry, but it, you know, sherry, if you ever try all the different types, they could taste pretty different one from the other. They have a commonality, but there's some variation. You know, the Christian Brothers cream sherry doesn't taste like the the Taylor, and it doesn't taste like the Fairbanks, and it doesn't taste like the Sheffield, and it doesn't taste like the uh, Bristol cream, and so on. I mean, they taste like sherry, which is an unusual, it's almost hard, it's very difficult to describe that. It's a wine that tastes very different than what you're thinking of, white or red wine, all right? So, but uh, if they use some unusual version of it in this, I guess it gives it an unusual almond extract or nut oil thing and German caramel candy or whatever, you know, it's a strange thing, but it's, it is noticeable and you get the nose for it and the taste for it, then you know it is. You say, ah, that's the charcoal perfected. Now you won't, you probably won't say, ah, I like it. You just say, ah, that's it. Okay, here we go. Don't even bother looking up a website because there ain't none. Except that Heaven Hill has it listed in their product specifications. And I think they have a dant charcoal perfected. No, no, no. The charcoal perfected is one thing. And then there's the dance bottled and bond. Yeah, it's different. All right. This smells kind of like candy corn. Candy corn, right? Candy. It's a laugh, right? But yeah, but it is made mostly out of corn. The bourbon's got to be mostly corn, right? The grain spirits, that doesn't matter, the grain, but it is invariably corn. Being the USA, if we were in Thailand, might be rice. Still wouldn't matter. <coughs> yeah, just smells like generalized uh, whiskey, you know. Standard, stereotypical American whiskey. I don't know how else to explain it. Or as the U.S. government would say, the aromas and flavors generally associated with whiskey. All right, over here. This has got to be the dance because the dance has that weirdness. Hmm. Well, hmm. Oh, this has kind of that sharp peppery note though in the nose. So this could be the club. I knew, well, you, I've said this before. When you do A against B, it'll taste one way. A against C, a totally different way. A against D, E, F, G. Every time you do A, the, the one you're doing, Against all the others, it'll be tasting different. Uh, not always, but many times. And then it's like, I'm drinking a different whiskey. But you know it's the same. It came out the same bottle. Hmm. Okay, so on nose, I better hold back. I better not say anything. But I do lean or tend to think this is the club whiskey. I don't know what clubs would serve it. But that's what they call it. Hmm. Uh, it's just like ethanol, you know, corn whiskey, but there's a little strange little picayune, you know what I mean? Little picayune, a little strange rumor, a strange little Sugar type candy, caramel twist, curl, nut oil. Yeah, it might be the perfected, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. All right, over here. <clears throat> Ouch. <clears throat> yep, that's the club. <clears throat> no. Cool. <clears throat> Oh, no, baby. Why would you ever buy something like that? Guess what? I wouldn't. I'm going to tell you why it's the club. The grain spirits in it is harsh. They're not supposed to have any taste or aroma, but they there. It's like <laughs> grain alcohol in your face. And then I think what it is, is this Jim Beam 
bourbon coming into play because it does have some of that green wood. You ever drink Jim Beam? If you ever taste Jim Beam, it tastes like the wood wasn't cured all the way, like it wasn't totally dry, like it's green. You say they don't use green wood to make barrels. You're stupid. Yeah, I know they don't. I say that's what it tastes like. I know they take dry oak, probably white oak, and they char it, at, you know, after they build the barrel, they char it to whatever level they feel like charring it, and uh, they age the bourbon in it, which is clear when they put it in there, by the way, I thought I'd add that. The grain spirits are clear. The bourbon's clear. Well, it, ain't, it isn't bourbon yet. It's just what you say, moonshine. After it aged two years, then it becomes straight bourbon. But that beam has that strangeness. So yeah, yeah. Do they still make some stuff like that? Yeah, they make beams eight star, and it's only aged two years. Well, it's about the same price as these, a little bit more, because it got the beam name on it, you know, so they're going to charge more. But uh, it tastes more like Jim Beam, too. But it's washed out. I don't have my nose. It's washed out because of the grain spirits, you know. But uh, I've heard people say that's what they use in the bar room when you order a beam and coke. You say, I want a beam and coke. Oh, yes, sir. And they pour it, beams eight star and coke. And they're not cheating you because you said beam. Now, if you said Jim Beam straight bourbon and Coke and they pour beams, they start, then they're committing a fraud because they're pouring a different product. And somebody last night on alcohol eggs, I mean, on the uh, wild card Wednesday, you know, the uh, Oktoberfest beers hang out, said a lot of bars from what they hear. And I've heard this from a person working at a barroom club. They'll take the good whiskey and pour it out, maybe take it home, and then they pour some cheap stuff in the bottle to fool the consumer, which is a theft. It's a fraud. You're stealing people's money because you're substituting a cheaper product as a premier product. Now, you might say, well, that happens all the time. Yeah, well, okay, but maybe so, but that doesn't make it right. It's still a crime. The charcoal perfected actually tastes better than the club whiskey. But that's not saying much because the club whiskey does not taste good. <laughs> so it's just a level of one is worse than the other. But I wouldn't say, I would not at this point use the word good in relationship to these two. Now, I know what I said in the solo. Some people are going to say, well, wow, you did a solo review and you gave it a good score and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, that was then. This is now, okay? And taste challenges, it, it skews the score. And plus, you learn as you drink through them, the taste can change, and you get a better appreciation of the taste. And then a lot of bad badnesses, a lot of unrighteousnesses, you know what I'm saying, come out. And you say, oh, I didn't catch that the first go round. So to, for somebody like they've had done in the past to comment on my videos and say, well, you know, in 2011, you reviewed that beer and you gave it a, uh, an A minus, and now you're giving it a B plus. So that discredits your whole channel. I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, those kind of comments don't even make sense. It's like many people have watched movies and then later on they say, yeah, I watched it again a couple of times. Really not that good. I just, thought it was there's a lot of problems with it you know so oh man that this club whiskey it's got this strange and i said this from the day maxwell he retracted a message oh well <laughs> uh sometimes people do that because they'll make a typing error but it does actually let you edit it you can edit it now if you're on facebook messenger you can't it like you can only delete it so irritating you know, because I can't stand grammatical mistakes. So, you know, it's like, drives me crazy. And people are like, why did you delete the message? What are you trying to hide? I said, nothing uh, except grammar. 
you know, all I do is copy it, repost it, fix the grammar mistakes, and then delete the first. That's the only time I ever delete. It's never because of really content. Like, oh, I'm sorry I said that. I shouldn't have said that. No, it's like I should have used proper grammar, pronounce, proper punctuation, usually what it is, or I spelled something wrong, or whatever. Or the sentence structure was so poor, it was like, didn't make a whole lot of sense. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I hope you're doing well over there in Russia. He's saying peace in the morning. Okay. Well, I know what it is. So I'm going to call it uh, one last sip. Oh, wow. It is. It's just a Heaven Hill product. It's got that honeydew melon underbody, undertake, I mean, undertaste. I'll still go 80, though, B minus at the lowest B minus, because you could, some people might like it and make an argument that it's marginally good. But the best you could say is marginally good. Now, what if they had not perfected it with charcoal filtering? Oh, can you imagine? It might be really ragged, but it might be better in a way. The raggedness might cover up some of the bad flavors that the charcoal filtering brings. I don't know. I can't figure this product out. I wouldn't buy it again. No way. I have bought whiskeys again. I bought a big bottle of Johnny Walker Red Label because I had the regular 750 and I'm almost finished with it. And I said, no, no, no. I want to go. I want to keep bringing Johnny Walker Red into the taste challenges with scotch. It's a good baseline. And I need it. So I bought a 1,750 at International Market, $35.99. I thought it was a good deal until I went to Total Wine and they had it for $3 cheaper. I was like, dang, wasted three dollars, but I I didn't know. Uh, but that's a good baseline. I wouldn't use this for a baseline. This is good for an aberration, you know, like an example of stuff being way off track. You know, like oh, this is the way whiskey shouldn't be. It's like so deviant to the norm. I don't know what this peppermint spice is. Uh, I mean to say spearmint spice. I mean, did Beam, did Jim Beam add like literally spearmint to it? I don't know what they did, but all I know, it shouldn't be like that. I don't care what anybody says. Rare Pikachu blanket. Do you ever use a palate cleanser? And if so, what's the most effective? Oh, water. You say you should use ginger. I know, right? I should have like little chopsticks and eat some ginger but now nah, i mean people overplay that i suppose well maybe with beer it's important but with these they're so distinct i mean you can't confuse them you're just not going to confuse them they're just not, oh yeah i might want to check my labels now so here's the reveal i'm saying this is the charcoal perfected that's a funny name perfected yeah yeah it's perfect Woo. These are both so strange. All right. So this one tastes like some kind of menthol, like a menthol cigar or cigarette. You say, what? I don't know what's going on with it. It's just off the board, off the board of any kind of credible appreciation of whiskey. Uh, <clears throat> you might be able to go to a B minus, though, just because some people are going to say, I like, I like bizarre products like that. I like them to taste strange. When you're a stranger, <clears throat> they might say, oh, I, I like that. <clears throat> I like the unique quality because, yeah, it is unique because I never taste anything even remotely like it. So it's strange. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like they put some peppermint schnapps in there on the steak or that green schnapps, you know, the mint. Hey, oh, Lord, we put the wrong one. Don't color it. Don't color it. They say, don't add the green color and just, they don't, they, those little drunks, they won't know. <laughs> I don't know. I hate to say those kind of things. All right. CP, this better say CP. It does. Charcoal perfected. Yeah. The good news. I only got two more challenges with this thing. Sunnybrook, another Jim Beam oddity. And that's one of the top selling blended whiskeys in America, apparently, Sunnybrook. I like the sun and I like Brooks, but I wouldn't want to 
drink Sunny Brook next to the a brook in the sun. You know what I'm saying? It's like ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. somebody kept telling me that stuff is bad. That's the worst. It ain't the worst, believe me. But it's not. It is not approachable. <laughs> too approachable. Then the final one on Saturday is going to be a rescue attempt. It's going to be. Seagram Seven Crown to the rescue. Seagram Seven Crown to the rescue. Seagram Seven to the rescue. Go Seagram Seven. Go Seagram Seven. So it has been so downbeat with these blended American, you could say atrocities, I guess. And you say there's no hope, no hope. I don't care anymore. And when you almost gave up all hope, you see Seagram Seven Crown coming around the corner. And he says, here I am to save the day. I was wondering what that noise was. Us, oh, the garbage man. The garbage men. <laughs> All right. You say, no, those are um, waste management technicians. Oh, right. That's right. Um, well, that was a thoroughly not great experience. They're both gone, though. Now I can have them out of my face. Get out of my stinking face for a long time. Except I still have to look at that charcoal perfecta for two more taste challenges. Sunny Brook, which will be thoroughly, in my opinion, is going to be depressing. That will be Friday. Friday. Unless I do Friday today, you know. Tomorrow's Friday. Then we'll have an upbeat closeout with Seagram 7 Crown to save the day. I opened the Seagram's bottle yesterday, and I just smelled it. I said, yes. Seagram's take me away like Calgon, you know, so I put it back on, and I was like, yeah, baby. You're going to kill the competition. That's why you're number one. Why is Seagram 7 the number one selling blended whiskey in America and one of the top 10 whiskeys of any type, of any type in America? Well, I'll tell you why, because it tastes good. <laughs> it's obviously higher quality. It's obviously higher quality. And they actually have a website. You know what I mean? They have a website. They have a Facebook page. They have flavored varieties, the honey, the 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 the, 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 what's the, the apple and some others too that they don't list. So it's it has some credit it has a level of credibility to it. These things they don't really. Okay, so that was, uh, well, I don't know about the word fun. It was uh, something to do, you know what I mean? But I did get it right, and I've been getting it right lately now. Pretty much got, it's, I'm like in the groove, you know, the record player, we in the groove, and we rolling along. And we got two songs left on this uh, very shabby album. <clears throat> um, but um, so one thing I can say about Charcoal Perfected, you can, you can pick up the taste and you can distinguish it from others. You can distinguish it from other whiskeys. The only problem is you probably don't want to distinguish it because you don't even want to deal with it. All right. Thanks for watching this video production and y'all take care and come on back soon now.